Good morning. My name is Rochelle O'Neill Thorpe. I'm also known in Japan as Rocheru. That is the Japanese pronunciation in kanji characters um, of uh, my name. And in China, my name was given to me by my professor at UMass Amherst. It is behind us, you can see it written by uh, Sensei Kaji Aso, who is a Japanese master artist. It's Ni Ruo Qian. Um, it means Ni because my uh, maiden name was O'Neill. And so O'Neill pronounced in Chinese, he selected Ni. Um, Ruo Qian is my uh, phonetic sounding of Rochelle but it means to be like a flower. And this flower is a red uh, Chinese um, flower. It's sort of like a, a rose that grows on a vine. Um, and so, uh, and it means to be um, unfold, like to be like similar unfolding, like a flower, a red flower. Um, I was very happy when he chose that name because my nickname by my uncle and his friends was Red. <laughs> So when I was a little girl, my hair was a really red, bright red color. I would play outside in the sand and in the dirt, the Oklahoma clay dirt, and come in with red skin and red hair. So when my professor chose that name, Ruo Qian, uh, which is ancient for red, I was like, wow, how did he know? <laughs> he has very many characters that reminded me of one of my uh, uncle's buddy. Um, so... I began to study Mandarin Chinese exactly 40 years ago, and the following semester, um, after I traveled to Japan to visit a friend, I decided to take up Japanese. So uh, I studied Mandarin for over 40 years ago, and I started studying Japanese about 38 years ago. So um, today, uh, is the anniversary um, of the uh, nuclear reactor in Japan. And I bought, I wrote this story to express my gratitude for my Japanese friends. It's called The Tales of Teacups. But it actually is a book about also meeting three very fantastic women. One of the first women is Miss Bay, which is stands for Bay, oh, means cup, but it also means Beijing. So to celebrate Chinese culture, one of the characters is named Mrs. Bei. To celebrate the Japanese experience that I've had, I named one of the cups Ocha. Ocha is the Japanese word for tea. So you will see Miss Ocha. The last character in the book, her name is Fortuna. Now, Fortuna is not Japanese or Chinese. She's African. She was my neighbor uh, when I got married and moved to Cambridge. I soon became a widow after being married for 10 years, a young widow. But this young mother, young bride lived downstairs and she was from Ethiopia, Eritrea to be exact. And she was a new mom. And I remember being the new mom. Sometimes she would leave the laundry in the dryer or washer as she was nursing her new baby. So I'd go and fold the laundry or put it in the dryer and leave the quarters on top of the machine um, and then fold them up and bring them to her. And at, out of her gratitude, she would serve me tea. And we had an African tea, which most of you know as chai. But did you know that chai is actually shahai in Amerik? Amerik is the language of most of the people that live in Northern Africa speak Amharic or Amerik, or what you call, is a version of Arabic. But the language that she speaks is Tigrinya, is another, so there are dual languages in Northern Africa, several dialects but Tigrinya. Now, it's really interesting. Um, I had this cup given to me and the woman on the cup is wearing a scarf. You see that? So I named this character 
after my neighbor, first Tuna. Now it's very interesting in, in Africa, Northern Africa, the women wear many scars. They could be Somalian, they could be Eritrean, or they could be Ethiopian, or they could just, they could also be um, uh, uh, Islamic, or they could be Jewish. Um, we call it falasha. You guys, um, some the the uh, Israelis sometimes call them falasha Jews. Uh, they're African Jews, and the original Hebrews came from Africa. So we, um, I love this cup, and I love that I had her. So my muse in this story is Kisha. I have two stories where there's a character Kisha. The other book where this kind of headscarf is worn is um, in my book, Aisha's Gift. And Aisha is about a young girl named Keisha who meets an Aisha in her classroom who's wearing a scarf, but hers is the hijab. This month not only marks the uh, beginning of Ramadan, but in April, we have a special Easter this year. This year, Easter on April 4th, commemorates the 63rd assassination of, anniversary of the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. It also commemorates the 63rd year that his wife and children had to celebrate Easter without their father, the Reverend, the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So I am giving out special awards from my company, <clears throat> excuse me, Wiggles Press Books. I will be giving out the Tales of Teacups Awards. My Tale of Teacups Award will commemorate women who have lived similar to the mission of Coretta Scott King in her peace movement that followed the death of her husband. She ran around the world serving his mission. She did a wonderful job 40 years to his passing. She passed. And she passed on the anniversary date of my husband's passing. Yes, Coretta Scott King passed away the same week as my very husband, Richard Francis Thorpe. So I thought it would be very much in commemoration of people that I love to give out a special teacup award to people who have done a similar mission with their lives. This year, I will commemorate two women. The first woman that I want to commemorate is, her name is Diana Heibener. She was the manager and owner of the Global Child Language School that I worked for. Diana recognized my abilities to speak fluent Mandarin Chinese and gave me the opportunity to teach in local school districts. I was able to teach in Natick and in Melrose and Belmont, Mandarin Chinese. It was a very, very, very proud and fulfilling moment for me. She since sold her company to a Hispanic woman, which is fantastic. Another great move to move a global language school into the hands of a Hispanic woman during the time that has been most difficult for Hispanic women in the media. Um, following the presidency and during the presidency of Donald Trump. Um, so she is so validated in getting the Tales of Teacups Award from Wiggles Press. The other person I'd love to commemorate is the mayor of Cambridge. She is a Muslim American woman. And I don't want to butcher her name, but I believe the last name is Subdul. I hope I'm saying it correctly but I want to give her the Tales of Teacups Award as well. That award will, of course, be teacups, and I will be offering a tea kettle in addition, and a letter from me telling them how grateful I am for the work they have done for humanity and for women in Massachusetts. Very grateful. So stay tuned for more. I am going to narrate this book on a separate filming. So, and announce some very important things. Stay tuned. Thank you.